so I think we'll get cracking. We've got, uh, yeah, we've got about, we've got nearly 50 people in there, which is super exciting and a lot more than we can usually fit in our pub that we generally do this uh, meeting and uh, this uh, session in. So uh, welcome everybody. Um, happy International Women's Day. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this evening. And we're so excited that so many people um, have joined us for our uh, women's cycling stories and our amazing speakers tonight. Um, so uh, a few housekeeping bits before we start, the usual boring stuff that we all know. Uh, please, if you can keep your microphones off, uh, that would be fantastic, uh, just so we don't have any background noise, um, children, dogs, TVs, that kind of thing, so everyone can hear properly, that would be great. Um, if you have any questions, all questions, very, very welcome, so uh, please pop them in the chat. Um, we've got, um, so the team here from Lady Pedal, um, we've got uh, Lois, Annabelle, uh, Noemi, Hannah, uh, all joining us, helping out with the questions tonight, and Lily uh, also, who is going to be uh, taking some notes and getting some uh, some great stuff to put on social media afterwards to celebrate uh, the event. Um, so yeah, if you've got chats, uh, if you've got questions, please pop them in the chat, um, and we will ask the questions after each speaker. But there might be time for more questions at the end, so uh, keep them coming in. Um, we will be recording the session, um, so if you don't want to be um, recorded, uh, please, you know, turn your cameras off or, you know, remove your name if you don't want it to be seen, that's not a problem, and we'll take some screenshots throughout as well, again, we love a bit of social media and celebrating um, things, so um, that, that's what that's for. Um, so, um, yeah, a little bit about Lady Pedal and what this event normally looks like. So, uh, yeah, normally we meet in a pub in Manchester and we have about 30 uh, people at this event. Uh, unfortunately last year's um, got cancelled uh, due to COVID at the very last minute um, so some of our amazing speakers that we had last year have joined us this time which is awesome but it also means we've been able to get some speakers from slightly further afield um, from Cardiff for example Vera is joining us from um, so, um, so that's really exciting and it's great to see we've got people from all over the place in the chat so yeah please let us know where you're from um, anything you know you want to tell us about your sort of cycling and stuff um, it's really great to see people from all over the place and share and share, share some great stories. Um, a bit about Lady Pedal for those who don't know about us. Um, so we're a Manchester-based sort of women's cycling collective. Uh, we have a kind of focus on um, sort of, well, inspiring and kind of um, encouraging women around cycling. We do lots of maintenance um, maintenance type uh, projects and that's how Lady Pedal started originally was a group of women at the university sort of fixing a bike, uh, a puncture together and thinking, oh, we, we, we want to be able to do this by ourselves. We don't need the help of the blokes that stop to help. You know, we can, we can do it by ourselves. So it started from that and we run, um, we run maintenance sessions. We run confidence boosting um, uh, sessions. We run breeze rides, um, which is the women's cycling sort of program rides. Uh, we have a festival each year as well in non-COVID times and do a bunch of other kind of community stuff in the meantime. Uh, we, we ran a great food bank ride um, at Christmas, which was really successful and we, has a sort of a small army of women um, who kind of rode around Manchester collecting food for the food bank at Christmas, which was awesome. So, uh, yeah, we do a whole range of stuff. And um, basically, we just love cycling and we love telling people about it. Um, so, uh, so, again, yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this year's Women's Cycling Stories um, is uh, run in collaboration with um, Manchester Bike, uh, Women Bike, which is a project set up by one of our speakers, Anna. Um, and is very much celebrating women in cycling. And she's going to be our set first speaker, so she'll tell um, us all about that. Um, our other speakers we have today, so we have Danielle Riley, uh, Laura Fashi, MBE, um, and uh, Vera Ngozi. Um, so we're really excited. Thank you so much for joining us. And I think we'll crack on really with our first speaker. So um, over to you, Anna. Thanks, Beth. Can you hear me? Awesome. Okay, brilliant. Um, hello, everybody. Happy International Women's Day. It's really lovely to be here. Um, I'm just going to share my screen with you now, show you a few pickies. Um, can everyone see that? Amazing. Well, um, I'm Anna. Um, I have been a lifelong cyclist um, since I was super little, um, growing up in Oxford. It was just the way we used to get around. So I'm really thankful for um, my parents never driving me anywhere. It's like, if you need to get somewhere, you need to get there on your bike. I'm struggling to see the top of my screen. Um, but I run Powwow Pedal Power, which is a community project uh, focusing on pedals and paint and people. And where possible, I try to combine everything together into one big um, 
lovely community uh, project. Um, sorry, my my slides aren't working. <laughs> Um, sorry guys, um, not quite sure what happened there. Um, shall I try again? Yeah, don't worry, just give it another go. Um, can you see this? Uh, not yet. Okay, um, so yeah, I, I just thought I'd show you a few pictures about just my absolute love of cycling around, um, whether it's hundreds of miles or cycling with hundreds of people, slamming it around the velodrome or cycling way beyond my due date with both my babies, um, lugging the, the, the babies around when they arrive and getting them on their bikes and doing silly bike adventures and things like that. So when I was invited to talk tonight, I was like, how can I fit like a lifetime of just being obsessed with bikes into 10 minutes? So I thought I could just try and tickle tickle the few projects and, and work, um, work jobs that I've had in cycling since coming to Manchester. And it all started with coming back to my bike um, after my first year at uni when everyone was laughing at me for cycling around it's like why are you going on a bike around the place where you can just get on the bus but like but it just felt like no one understood like why I was cycling everywhere and I came back to my bike and found this a flyer that looked like this um, stapled around the top of my top tube on my bike inviting me to an end of summer party on bikes um, critical mass and I discovered hundreds of people cycling around the city peacefully and happily making friends ending up at like um parties and open spaces and stuff and just sharing an absolute passion for biking of of every sort so i quite uh, quickly got involved with ibike mch who were sort of the grassroots group behind critical mass and setting up all of the other projects like the spokes bicycle dance trooping and the bike polo um, and everything like that. So I just started making posters and helping out with the events and things like that, making banners in one of the art workshop and cycling around and putting them up around the city. Um, and they got, quickly got taken down. Um, and Ness, this brilliant woman who started iBike MCR, she worked for Sustrans. So we got permission to do a really scrappy little mural on the Fallowfield loop and that ignited kind of the idea to merge my art degree with an absolute love of cycling. Um, so we started painting murals with her Sustrans schools. So she was working at these schools all over Greater Manchester. Um, and I just thought, brilliant, I can come along, work with the, the entire school from reception age up to year six and design and paint these mu murals onto the um, wall in their playground. And it was an absolute nightmare. It's like using sticky gloss paint um, in the pouring rain, um, dripping down, tiny kids everywhere. But we kind of, we got there in the end, kind of doing it for about 10 different uh, schools around the place. Um, and then this has led to my most recent um, mural in Platfields. Um, so I worked with a few different community groups on this one. Can I, sorry, can I just check that you can hear me? We can hear you, but we can't see any slides. I don't know if you're sharing slides. Oh, really? Sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. We I'm were sure describing we... it so well that we <laughs> imagine yeah. what you're- Have you not seen any of these like. slides? <laughs> Don't we can always share the photos. I don't know. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Is that oh, working? Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm not, not very good with Zoom, as you can see. <laughs> don't worry. As, as Laura said, you're explaining it so well. We felt like we were there anyway. <laughs> don't worry. Okay. So this is this the latest 
bike mural in Platfield um, and I worked with a bunch of different um, community groups to design the murals and then they came back and painted them in the park um, just about managed to fit these workshops in just as the pandemic struck so the project's about halfway through at the moment but it was just really nice because it was bringing all these unlikely groups together and then I was asking any members of the Greater Manchester community to send me a picture of them um, on their bike and then I'd do my best to replicate it into the finished piece and I think you can see um, one of your very own Lady Pedal members just about um, under Platfield's Bike Hub fixing a bike and working her magic on that one. Um, and then this is kind of taking back to the beginning of Pow Wow. Um, I set it up with my partner and we just thought, brilliant, let's, let's find another way to get people on bikes. Uh, so we made these uh, bicycle power generators. Um, so you jump on the bike and if you want to hear the music, you have to pedal for it. And if you want louder music, you've got to pedal harder. Um, the challenge is to kind of choose your favourite song and then and then uh, see if you can pedal, pedal it all the way through to the end. And then we just started exploring different ways. It's like, right, we can power music. Could we power a film? So we turned it into a little cinema and started working with a few different organisations to show film screenings um, just around in parks and things like that. And then we developed it into a karaoke machine um, for festivals and events which just is it just sounds so bad <laughs> it's like um if you want to sing loud you've got to pedal really hard but then if you're pedaling really hard and um, then you just can't sing well but it's really good fun and we we felt like people were coming away from the events like going yeah I had a really good time on a bike I'm not a cyclist but that was quite fun and I got to go on it with my family um so that was quite cool. And we started doing some lead rides um, around Manchester and then kind of started exploring a bit further afield. So um, managed to get the gig with Glastonbury to do the official ride to Glastonbury each year, um, which was pretty amusing, trying to get 50 festival goers over the Mendip Hills. People were turning up on like shopper bikes. And, like, <laughs> They're just like falling to pieces all the way. But we got there eventually and Michael Evis was waiting for us at the end. So that was that was pretty cool. Um, and then we were doing these pedal powered screenings, but struggling to get the copyright to show um, the films we wanted to and kind of on very limited money. Um, just thought, right, brilliant. Let's make our own movies to show. And um, it was approaching October and um, the October Critical Mass is always just a, like a scary Halloween parade on bikes through the city. It's just like an amazing spectacle. If if you've not experienced it, um, I'd definitely recommend it. So I made a bike horror film, of course, and uh, did the spooky Critical Mass. Um, and then we ended up in the park for a pedal powered bike horror movie. And it's so bad and uh, so amateur, but um, we made a sequel, Chained Massacre. <laughs> Um, again pedal powered but just again just trying to get as many people just coming and having a real good time on bikes and just just enjoying hanging out with friends and so on like that um, and on a more serious note like um, I've been very lucky to work with these brilliant organizations kind of on and off over the years in a freelance capacity uh, delivering bikeability to little ones all the way up to adults um, in a learn to ride capacity or, or on the road um, and continue to do so now because like I'm just I feel so enthusiastic that the more people that are feeling safe and confident on the roads like the better bike community we're gonna have um, and that kind of led me to set up Platfield's Bike hub in Platfields Park in the old boathouse which is just really focusing on like grassroots community cycling and being able to uh, supply affordable bikes um, for everyone um, and if you go along on a Saturday you can use the tools and learn to fix your own bike um, so it's really cool it's still going now three days a week um, if you want to give them a visit um, and that sort of led me on to doing my dream job for um, 
CTC back then, now Cycling UK, which was developing community cycle clubs across Greater Manchester, which is like the absolute dream. Um, and the community cycling clubs uh, program is still going strong today, which is absolutely fantastic. And then it was like, oh, I had a baby. Can he still cycle? Like, is this the end? <laughs> So I had like a month of pushing the baby around in a push chair and it's like, this will not do. <laughs> and found that there's this um, really safe bike trailer that you could put a baby in from 10 weeks and they just rock around and finally get to sleep. So that was just brilliant. And that kind of opened up the kind of new chapter of cycling with little people and encouraging other people to do the same. So I just thought if I'm just knocking around on my bike all the time with a baby, then I might as well get other people to do it as well. So just set myself up in Platfields every Monday and slowly more and more people felt kind of confident enough to come and give it a go. And it's kind of turned into a really quite nice little baby biking community, which is quite cute. Um, and that leads me on to MCR Women Bike, which is my current project. And uh it's been running so far since January and thank you so much Lady Pedal for all your support and helping get this project out there because I launched this project and just wondered how it was going to go in the pandemic and not being able to see or speak to anyone properly and it just just being kind of fully reliant on the internet and mithering people and then slowly it's kind of yeah the aim of the project was to reach out to as many many folk identifying as female across Greater Manchester to send me a self-portrait um, of them holding a sign with the reason why they like to cycle. So it's kind of like people, it took people a little while to get their heads around it, but then once they did, we started getting the most wonderful pictures in and slowly they were kind of creeping up and we were getting more and more in, um, starting from, you know, prenatal in, in the tummy type women and going up to little six month baby girls. I cycle because I love the freedom to two year olds, just finding their little feet on their balance bikes. And then this entry from our oldest submission and she's 92 years old and only stopped riding a two wheeler when she was 86 and wonders why more people her age aren't cycling. So I just, I wonder if for another lady pedal cycling story or stuff, we, we need to get this formidable role model in and um, to try and encourage kind of older women to kind of keep cycling, keep cycling. It can be done. Um, and then it just started opening up to the slightly older kids. Um, I like cycling because it's good for the environment and it's very fun exercise. And that's a little girl, Freya, who's six. Um, this is Katie Toft, who's a, I think she's five time world champion paracyclist. So really, really tough to have her on board. Power and freedom. Uh, riding a bike makes me happy another yeah it's really amazing how many women said freedom and happiness and mental health it was like they, they were the main reasons um and this was the acrostic poem and i had to look up what an acrostic poem was but just like gorgeous i cycled to get me there on time cycling makes sense and it does i cycle for mind pocket and planet I love my bike. It goes super fast and cycling made me trust my body. So thank you so much to anyone on here that's sent a picture. Um, they're absolutely amazing and there's still time. The project's running till midnight tonight. You don't have to be out on a ride anywhere. You can just grab your wheels and do it in your living room or something. Um, so the more portraits, the better it would just be amazing. Um, and I just thought put a few of my contact details on there um, just in case you want to stay in touch. Um, but yeah, I'm really sorry about the um, Zoom technical problems at <laughs> <in> the beginning. <laughs> uh, 
Um, Thank you so much, Anna. You do even more incredible things than I thought you did. There's <laughs> even more to you that's just amazing. I think everybody <laughs> feels that way from the chat. We've had some great comments and questions. Were there any photos that you didn't share that you'd like to share with us from near the beginning or any super special where ones? Did you, where did you come in? Um, um, at the Platfields Fight Club mural. Yeah, um, that's how I get back there. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry if you can't it was only if there was some new ones yeah it was it was just a few self-indulgent pictures of me on my bike mainly doing different well things. please send it us and we'll share them afterwards okay. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much thank you so um annabelle um have you i think you're on questions um from the chat are you able to ask them yeah so we've had some great questions in and it's a joy to hear about all the wonderful projects that you're doing there Anna. So we've had um, a couple of like good variety of questions. So um, first one from Lois, have you found councils and other stakeholders support supportive of your project? So councils and stakeholders, have you found quite a lot of support there? Yeah, it's been really cool over the years. Um, I, th I think that's kind of the main the main way that um, the projects have been able to go ahead is by collaborating with other groups and organisations. Um, it's been really, really helpful. So you'll kind of collaborate, kind of like double the numbers and like kind of double the funding pot type thing. So that's just been like the same throughout, always, always, yeah. Oh, great thanks for that and we've got in some interest in the um very interesting film chained massacre is <laughs> people able to watch it anywhere yeah. or, or pay for you to watch it or anything yeah um i, I i'll send you the links but i am going to warn you i'm not a filmmaker and the comments i had on the night was is this over yet when's the bar oh. open I thought it was I, quite, I thought it was quite scary, but I will send you the link to. I've definitely got Chained Massacre online. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, someone requested that, so hopefully <laughs> we can give you some feedback. <laughs> um, also from Louise, how can we build a community with drivers who seem to have not very much patience with us sometimes? From your advice have you got any advice for people there? really good question and uh, i live in levenshoe and they're putting these um, active um, neighborhood um, barriers in to try and kind of regulate short car journeys and dangerous driving and it's actually quite horrifying what an outrage so many of the community have um, over these changes because they're they're outraged that they can't drive 60 miles an hour through residential streets type thing and it is it's a it's a really an unfortunate I, d I don't want to say battle because you want to work you want to work together don't you um it's really difficult I think like um I know bike right are doing um safe urban driving workshops with like lorry drivers and bus drivers so kind of starting from kind of the professional drivers is like a really good way I honestly think it, it should be included in a driving license. People should have to do the bike ability course or something like that, or there should be more cycle awareness, like, you know, starting from when people are first learning to drive. Um, but it is really difficult. And I suppose if there are like better traffic calming me measures and they start working, then maybe it could be like a, a knock on effect, but um, I, it's such a big topic. <laughs> Um, and dangerous driving does really worry me yeah yeah there's some pointers there I suppose and some you've shared some um, of your kind of experience there that's really help, helpful I'm sure as well so um but we've got one last question as well um from Laurel so she um has mentioned do you have any ideas of where the photos might be exhibited from this most yeah. recent pro project I can't wait to have a big exhibition with these gorgeous pictures. Um, so we're going to get them print, all printed out and then we can all come together, perhaps with a couple of different lead rides coming from different places. I think um, the, the natural kind of first port of call would be at Station South when Station South opens. Um, so for those who don't know, it's, um, it's a really ambitious project that's coming to Levenshoom, which is going to be a cycle destination cafe. So it'd be brilliant to have a big exhibition there and perhaps we could get a digital pedal powered exhibition going on somewhere. But 
I, I just feel like these these pictures need to be seen by as many people as possible. Um, so as soon as we're allowed to gather together, we will we'll get, we'll get some dates and some venues in. Thanks so much, Anna, for your time and uh, for showing us everything that you've been up to. It's fantastic. Thanks for having me. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you, Anna. That was amazing. Um, right.